Hello, my name is Julian Butler, or you can call me Coach J for short. I live in Miami, Florida, where I'm a personal trainer, small business owner, and fit life training brand ambassador. So the question is, is how did I get into personal training? And honestly, it's just something that's been always in my life. Um, I was a three sport athlete, basketball, football, and track growing up. And then after high school, I joined the military, was a proud member of the United States Air Force. So just within that, you know, I've always been an athlete and I've always been in a service oriented position. So when I got out of the Air Force, personal training just felt natural and wanting to stay connected in that health and wellness field, but also continue to give back, help someone on their journey, transform themselves physically, but not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. Um, I teach a lifestyle. Right? We're not just going to get results off of going through the motions, but we have to really adapt everything that a healthy um, lifestyle encompasses. So fast forward five years into this profession and coronavirus happens, which for a lot of people was a very detrimental situation. I mean, we're still going through it. When I take a step back and I look at how the world is responding, I like to keep my mind on the positive. I know it sounds very cliche, but at the end of the day, we can't really control what happens to us, but how we react. So if I would like to react in the most ideal way, it will be positive. You know, I see a lot of times we look at the lacking. We can't do this. We can't do that. We're restricted from this. We're restricted from that versus what opportunity do we have? What space was made for us to grow? And in the health and wellness field, you know, a lot of the gyms are closed. A lot of the condominiums are closed. We can't go to see our clients. We have to adapt and grow. So we did exactly that. At least I know I did myself. You know, instead of seeing my clients in person, I now do a Zoom or a FaceTime call. That is what life forces you to do. When one thing is taken away, it's not that something's taken away. A new thing is presented for you to um, be able to adapt and utilize. So technology, what a blessing that is that we have in 2020. Um, I know a lot of small businesses, a lot of gyms, a lot of you know health professionals have been able to benefit and stay afloat through that. So for that, I'm truly grateful. And not only are we keeping our businesses afloat, but we're keeping our spirits you know, alive and by continuing to move because there's a huge difference in just laying it down and saying, hey, if this isn't for me, I'm not gonna be able to do this versus, again, adapt and grow. When it comes to everything else, it's a little bit tougher to, you know, hold on to that positive outlook. And when I say everything else, I mean the racial injustices that's going on in the United States. And this is nothing new. This is something that's been going on for years and years. It's just now the whole world is to see it. So what do we do? Do we look at what are we lacking? We're lacking unity, we're lacking understanding, we're lacking oneness, or do we see the space that has been made for us to grow? And I think that's exactly what's going on. As bad as everything is, as bad as, you know, the George Floyd killing, the Breonna Taylor killing, the, you know, the names go on and on. These are all negative things. But if we truly want a positive outlook, we have to change how we react. Just like in the coronavirus, I can't control what happens to me, but how I respond. So my response is, what role do I play? And I challenge, you know, many others uh, to do the same. Instead of looking out at what the other side is doing, not that there should even be sides. You know, I'm looking at what are we doing as a one to make this situation better. And I think a lot of it starts with positivity, right? With positivity, with, with love, with understanding, there's now room for growth. But if we're trying to fight fire with fire, we just have one big fire and we're all gonna burn down. You know, that's, that's how I look at it. And it's hard to be a black man and take a step back and say that and control the emotions inside. Seeing from what's happened in the history, it's hard to say what works and what doesn't. But now that I'm looking at our present history that we're creating, I just wanna see change. And you know, many great people have said, if you wanna see change, you gotta start with the person in the mirror. So my goal for moving forward as a, as a black leader in my community is to accept that role. And I challenge many other black leaders and their community to accept your role, accept your identity. Identity is probably one of the biggest 
issues I think we can really own in on is who are you as a black man, as a black woman, as a white man, as a white woman, because this isn't about sides. You know, this is about oneness, but what role do you play in that oneness? If we look back on slaves becoming free, they didn't become free on their own. There was, you know, plenty of white folks that helped along that underground railroad. Plenty of white folks that said, you know what? Slavery is bad. We do need to start changing these laws. So just that right there in our history, we know that this isn't gonna be done alone on either side. You know, it's hard to put it as a clear answer solution because it never will be clear. But I think if we continue to focus on cleaning our own side of the road and helping, you know, where we can through leading by example and, and just spreading more positive narratives like the one that I'm sharing now, I think that we, we can definitely make a change within the coming years, but it will take time, it will take patience, and it will take the courage to, to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what can I do? Or what am I doing? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna continue to pray, because uh, I do believe in prayer, but no prayer is answered without action.